Okay, I think I'm going to just run ahead. We're uh, running uh, way off schedule. Oops, where am I? Because there is no complication, so the system cannot be distributed for other. But anything else part of your method? I cannot say if you are the only one, but I don't have this problem. <laughs> There's a subject for you, Steve. Deprecating legacy crap. <laughs> and introducing you. So I just wanted to mention what we've been doing in, in terms of deprecating things recently and, and how we're hoping, hopefully, going forward to remove things uh, that we don't want to have in the kernel anymore. So, of course, why we need to remove things. We have a lot of old and bad things that we possibly don't want to keep in the code base anymore. Some of it is unused, some of it is basically untested and uh, uh, basically not in line with current thinking. Like we've, uh, we remove features that really aren't working really well and isn't used much. And, uh, and also we, don't, we want to stop encourage people to use third party libraries that we don't feel are uh, up to the task really to, to help users. And of course, we keep the complexity down. We add code all the time. Uh, we better remove some code at times as well. Uh, yeah, it makes the code smaller in there too. So, how do we do? How do we remove things then? To main we need to maintain things, right? The API and ABI. So we uh, we discussed this on the mailing list. So the rules are in in basically in this file, or this is in this file. We document what we are deprecating. So we are basically removing things that we can remove without destroying the ABI or the API. Uh, which, of course, is a challenge. Um, since then we, cannot, we can't remove options, we can just make them not work anymore. And we can't remove functions since it will destroy the, a the ABI. So we start out by disabling things by default without any warning, and we document it, and we tell everyone in the changelog that we're removing things, it doesn't work anymore, but we don't actually remove the code. Like we have disabled pipelining, we have disabled the global DNS cache uh, since a while back, it's disabled, you can't use it, you can ask for it, but nothing will happen, the code is still there. And then after, um, right, uh, actually, right, we disable by default, and then, then um, after a while, then we disable it. Uh, we can do it first, just switch the default value to off, and then we disable it in the code. Just disable, you can't even enable it, even if you do it by force. And then, roughly six months or later after that, we remove the code completely, like we are about to remove pipelining. Uh, I have the merge uh, very close to actually be. Well, I had the PR ready, the merge will happen soon. Removing pipelining will happen. We will remove the DNS uh, global cache similarly. And it's easy for, because both of them are basically options that we can, users can enable and ask for it, but it doesn't really matter to them if we don't <laughs> I mean, do the right thing. They only ask for it. It's easy to just not do it. And we, of course, already removed all support for the AXTLS. Uh, TLS back and uh, a while ago because it's just not uh, good enough. Basically, a abandoned project. It doesn't support modern stuff. It doesn't even support SNI in TLS, and it uh, has a it's way behind on other TLS things. So, uh, not a good project that I think we shouldn't push users into AXTLS. There are lots of other TLS uh, alternatives to use that are much better. So, we ripped it out. And we are going to remove the HTTP pipelining, which when I ask users in this user survey every year, I ask users, do you use HTTP pipelining? And a lot of users say, yes, we use pipelining. And I always question that because I don't think it's true. I think everyone is conflating pipelining with persistent connections, and that's not the same thing. Um, you know, pipelining is, uh, you have to explicitly enable it in libcurl, and you have to uh, send 
more outgoing requests before the response has come back for, for the previous request. So yes, I will merge up here soon and we will remove it because it's really rarely used. It's very buggy. I, we, I'm sure, that, I mean, I've had this debate a few times with a few users who say that are, they're using it, they're happy, and they're not happy with me saying that they need to use HP2 instead to make this happen. But I still think this is the right way to do it. Um, we don't really test this very good. Um, back to Dan's point, this is a really not a good covered area. And it's really complicated to write test. It's very timing sensitive and it's really hard to debug because of this timing sensitivity. And the browsers, of course, already dropped pipelining a while ago. Um, those who supported it. I know that both Chrome and Firefox have dropped it completely. None of them had it enabled by default anyway. So I think it's, uh, it's time to do it. And it's the proper pipelining Saturating your connection outgoing and um, incoming over a TCP connection is much better done with HTTP2, and that's what we should encourage users to use. So, we removed the global DNS cache also because global DNS cache was never a good idea. And we've, um, I, I've tried to Google for it, and I haven't found many users of it. It was added for PHP users back in. 2002, I believe, we added a little note in the docs already 2004 that said, don't use this, we will remove it at some point in time. And I think 15 years later, and yeah, now is the point in time when it's time to actually remove it. So, and we have a much better API for it that is actually thread safe and, and sensible and allows users to share more ac exactly between threads and so on. And right, we also made HTTP 0.9 support, opt in which isn't really opt-in yet. It's still an opt-out, but because it's, uh, um, it's still, um, it will get disabled by default in September then. So in, by the September, we will uh, flip the default and make it disabled by default. So HTTP 0.9, uh, HTTP 0 0.9 response is a, a HTTP response without headers, basically. A binary or whatever body immediately which unfortunately makes it that you can pretty much redirect. If you ask curl to get HTTP from whatever server, basically, or whatever protocol, something will come back, and libcurl will consider that an HTTP 0.9, which I'm sure hasn't been investigated by enough number of users yet, but I'm sure that many users would be surprised if they actually knew about this and, and learned about it. So I figure it's time to really just stop it before they uh, get aware about it, because it's it's just surprising and, and not a good idea, I think. Possibly a security risk. Anything you don't Sorry? Anything you don't yes, it <laughs> uh, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, so our first quick command line actually uses 0 0.9, so yes. But, <laughs> but uh, well, we, st we can still enable it. And it'll remain an option to say, yes, I want to support 0 0.9, because I, I think there are some certain use cases when you might want to do this. So uh, the support will remain in there. We will just t toggle it off by default. And hopefully, the quick users will cease to exist very soon. <laughs> and it'll be HP3 instead. Um, right, it's possibly an ABI breakage, it's, it's a matter of definition, but I don't think there are many actual users of this out in the wild that, that can't handle, that they have to uh, set an option. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm very open for more suggestions on what we can do to trim out things that we don't use, and um, I will try to come up with questions to users from the, for the survey and see if we can figure out other areas that are a bit unused and dusty that we should clean out. And at the same, uh, in the same uh, spirit, and that we're removing deprecated stuff uh, and legacy crap, uh, we should uh, we introduce this way of introducing introduce this way of introducing experimental code. So now we introduce features with a clear experimental tag, like this new old services headers. It is documented as experimental in the documentation. It is disabled by default. You have to enable it by, with configure. And if you do, it warns you, it says that this code is experimental. Don't ship it in production. I'm sure that won't uh, actually stop anyone from doing it. But ho <laughs> hopefully, at least, that we can just 
tell them that we told them. Uh, the idea being that we can ship code a little bit earlier before we're perfectly sure about how, how it should work. So like in, in this case with uh, all services, I'm not exactly sure what kind of API or API we want here. What, what the user really want to do? How do they want to use this feature? So I figured it was, would be cool to get it out so people can start trying it out and we can possibly change how it works when, when we learn how pe people want to use it. Um, ideally at least. I'm not sure it'll work. Maybe it'll end up like usual that nobody says anything and then we'll just remove the label after a while and say, yeah, it will work like this now. But at least I tried. Um, right. Uh, so that's the old services header. It's the same. It's basically saying this site also runs over here on another host name, another port, another protocol potentially. Go there instead of here. Um, it's actually an old header introduced three years ago for HTTP2 to allow clients not get stuck in a single server, but move them over to another server that happens to be the same one. Basically, in a load balancer case, when you have a lot of load balancers, you don't want all connections to get stuck on one of them, because in, in the HTTP2 world, we have more persistent, long-going connections. And that is, this is the documented way to use HTTP 3. So that's how you bootstrap to HTTP 3. So we better get this done so that we can actually go HTTP 3, the documented way, uh, in the future. It's not used a lot. Apart from HTTP 3 and, and the quick experiments by Google, it's not used a lot. <coughs> so, might be some other interesting things with the experimental code to do in the future. I'm sure that some of the other things that I mm, mentioned yes, uh, not yesterday, but earlier, um, what, what we can do in the future, we can add as experimental, just to get the code out, to let, allow everyone to get a feel for it before we actually rubber stamp the exact behavior and decide that this is the way to do forever and ever. Um, I think in some, some areas in the past we've done some stupid mistakes in the APIs and ABIs and everything so that we have to live with forever after that. It could have been better to just try it out first and hopefully we can do it in this manner going forward. That's it. Any questions? Anyone want to deprecate any more stuff? Removing things is fun. So in the 